Until 2022, Russia was a proud owner of one of the largest and most powerful naval forces in the world. Sure, many of its hulls dated back to the Soviet era, but Russia's naval capabilities were still formidable and feared by many due to their sheer size and global reach. Then Russia made the fatal mistake of attacking Ukraine. Though this mistake has cost Russia and its president Vladimir Putin dearly across the board, politically, economically, and diplomatically, its navy has been hit particularly hard. Now, Russia's key naval assets are sidelined, the country's naval modernization plans are stalled, its operational capabilities are severely compromised, and worst of all, Russia is losing ships at an alarming rate. But this isn't the worst part for Russia. The worst part is that all of this is happening at the hands of a country that doesn't even have a proper fleet. Talk about irony. But how exactly is Russia running out of ships? Keep watching to find out. Only two short years ago, no one had faith that Ukraine could stand its ground against Russia's military might. Yet here we are, in 2024, as Ukraine's fierce resistance has proven all the skeptics wrong. Despite punching well above its weight, Ukraine has managed to not only defend its sovereignty, but also push back against Russian forces, demonstrating remarkable courage in the face of overwhelming odds. Russian naval forces were among the most formidable challenges Ukraine faced, but through innovative strategies, resourcefulness, and some international assistance, Ukraine has effectively contested Russian naval dominance in the Black Sea and Sea of Azov. However, contested Russia's naval dominance might even be considered an understatement given how things are currently unfolding in the Black Sea. Do you want a hint? These newspaper headlines should paint quite a vivid picture. Ukraine has broken Russia's naval supremacy in the Black Sea. Ukraine is winning the war's Black Sea front. Ukraine has no navy, but it's hammering Russia in the Black Sea. It doesn't look too good for Russia, right? Even though these headlines are enough to underscore Ukraine's remarkable naval achievements in the Russo-Ukrainian war, a closer look at the events that inspired them will help you understand just how much trouble Russia is in. Let's go through a quick rundown of all the Russian vessels Ukrainian forces have managed to destroy or severely damage since the beginning of the invasion. March 22, 2022 a Russian Raptor-class vessel gets hit by a Ukrainian anti-tank guided missile, causing this high-speed coastal patrol boat to get swiftly towed away. March 24, 2022, an Alligator-class landing ship called Saratov docked in Berdyansk, Ukraine catches fire. Ukraine quickly claimed responsibility for the attack, reporting that it was carried out using short-range OTR-21 Tochka tactical ballistic missiles. For its part, Russia did report the ship to be towed from the area, but mentioned no details regarding the cause of the fire. Interestingly, the Russian Navy only had three of these Cold War-era ships in active service, so Ukraine's successful targeting of one of them represents a significant blow to Russia's naval capabilities in the region. In the following days, two other Russian ships, the Sezer Kunikov and the Novichokask, docked nearby, also fled the area under similar circumstances, fire and smoke engulfing their decks. April 13, 2022, the day of one of Ukraine's biggest wins in the naval theater. The day the Slava-class guided missile cruiser named Moskva was taken out by the Ukrainian Navy. But what's so special about this ship? Well, the ship was the only flagship of the Black Sea Fleet, Russia's premier naval asset in the region. Moskva led the naval assault during Russia's invasion of Ukraine, playing a crucial role in the amphibious assault on Snake Island. Moskva was also considered one of the most powerful and iconic warships in the area, ultimately becoming the largest Soviet warship to be sunk since World War II. And in case you haven't put two and two together, Moskva was named after Russia's capital city Moscow, which added a symbolic layer to its destruction. The honor of carrying out this destruction belonged to two Neptune anti-ship missiles launched from the Crimean coast. At first, there was a massive explosion that engulfed Moskva in flames. However, the ship ultimately sank a day later while being towed away, as confirmed by Russian officials. The Moskva took at least 18 sailors down with it, with some reports claiming that the death toll was significantly higher. The first days of May 2022 brought no relief for the Russian Navy. Four more Raptor-class patrol boats were eliminated, thanks to Ukrainian Bayraktar TB2 drones. Russia only had about 16 of these boats, meaning Ukraine managed to take out over 30% of them in a little over a month. Though to be fair, three of these boats were outright destroyed in the second attack, while the fourth was towed to Sevastopol for repairs. In the same attack, a BK-16 high-speed assault boat sank near Snake Island, one of 12 in Russia's naval arsenal. May 7, 2022, the Bayraktar TB2 drones continued to wreak havoc in the Black Sea. This time, their target was a Cerner-class landing craft stationed on Snake Island. 
June 17, 2022, the Bayern M-Class Corvette named Veliki Ustyug, which previously participated in Russia's invasion of Ukraine, is now being towed away across the Volga River in a less than desirable state. This Corvette was part of the effort to modernize the Russian Navy, representing a massive upgrade of the original Bayern class built from 2004 onward. The vessel damaged by Ukraine was one of 20 in the Russian Navy's arsenal. On the same day, June 17, Ukraine reported that it had sunk a Russian rescue tug built to tow ships in distress, supply water and electricity to other ships, evacuate injured personnel, and fight fires at sea. The ship, named Vasily Beck, was taken out by two Harpoon missiles Ukraine received from Denmark. October 29, 2022, Ukraine is back to raining fire with unmanned aerial vehicles, aka drones. This time, the drones struck Natya-class minesweeper Ivan Golubets in Sevastopol, damaging the Soviet-era vessel used for ocean minesweeping. But this is far from the Ukrainian Navy's biggest hit on October 29th. During the Ukrainian attack on Sevastopol, the Admiral Grigorovich-class frigate named Admiral Makarov was struck with at least one drone, reportedly disabling its radar. Why is this hit notable? Because we're talking about the new flagship of the Black Sea Fleet post Moskva's sinking. Plus, let's not forget that this vessel also took part in the invasion, launching cruise missiles at a Ukrainian oil refinery and fuel deposits in Odessa and terrorizing the local population. Though the Russian Navy claimed Admiral Makarov suffered only slight damage, the vessel was put out of commission until August 2023. That's 10 months of one of Russia's most advanced frigates being out of action, a massive win for Ukraine. August 4, 2023 the Security Service of Ukraine SBU, and the Ukrainian Navy worked together to damage a Rapucha-class landing ship near the port of Novorossiysk, some 260 miles east of Sevastopol. The vessel named Olenogorsky Gorniak was one of the 15 Rapucha-class landing ships, the most important class available to the Russian Navy's service. It was on loan from the Northern Fleet at the time of the attack. Though Olenogorsky Gorniak wasn't sunk, it was severely damaged. However, even this was enough to cause a shift in the naval theater as the Ukrainian Navy reported that Russian ships were leaving the port and dispersing in the Black Sea. September 13, 2023 Ukraine conducts a nighttime raid on Sevastopol. Ukrainian Shukhoi Su-24 supersonic all-weather tactical bombers took part in this raid, targeting an improved Kilo-class attack submarine rostov Nadonu and another Rapucha-class landing ship named Minsk. The vessels were hit by Storm Shadow missiles, visibly destroying Minsk and damaging rostov Nadonu beyond repair. Though the Russian government doesn't seem to agree with the beyond repair part, vowing to return both ships to full operational status. This certainly won't be easy, however, as the Ukrainian attack on Sevastopol also badly damaged the dry dock repairs facility in the city, further complicating Russia's efforts to repair its damaged naval assets. On the same day in the same attack, a Turnitz-class patrol boat was sunk. September 24, 2023, Ukraine switches back to naval drones, damaging the Project 22160 patrol ship of the Russian Navy called Sergei Kotov. But this attack only managed to damage the ship. The Ukrainian Navy got the job done on March 5, 2024, when the Magura V-5 maritime drones sank Sergei Kotov off the coast of Crimea. This was the third notable ship Ukraine managed to sink in 2024. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, not when the Ukrainian Navy managed to damage two more Russian vessels in 2023. The first was on November 4th. The Ukrainian forces used cruise missiles to strike the Zaliv shipbuilding yard in Kerch, Crimea. This attack damaged a brand new Karakurt-class corvette Askold armed with caliber cruise missiles. The corvette, still in sea trials, was deemed a total loss following the November strike. December 26, 2023 Ukraine's Air Force launches Storm Shadow or SCALP cruise missiles that strike Novichokask, a Rapucha-class landing ship docked in Feodosia, Crimea. Does the name sound familiar? It should, as this is the same landing ship that was targeted in the March 2022 attacks. Then it fled the scene with minimal damage. Now, if Ukrainian reports are to be believed, Novichokask was no more. The Ukrainian attack seemingly detonated the munitions aboard the ship, leading to a massive explosion that reportedly claimed the lives of at least 33 of the 74 crew members. Taking out Novichokask meant significantly impeding the Russian Navy's ability to further invade Ukraine's Black Sea coast, which made this attack a triumphant way to close out 2023. February 2024 ushered in a new chapter in the Russo-Ukrainian naval conflict, equally devastating for the Black Sea fleet. February 1, 2024, one of 20 Tarantul-class corvettes, Ivanovets, is reportedly sunk in Donyaslav, Crimea, courtesy of the Magura V-5 maritime drones. 
Just before it sank below the surface, stern up, the ship's magazine detonated, leading to a spectacular series of explosions, quite a send-off for the Ivanovets. February 14, 2024, Ukraine finishes off another vessel that was previously damaged in March 2022. The large Rapucha 1-class landing ship Cesar Kunikov suffered the same fate as its fellow Novichokask. The only difference is that it met its end at the hands of the Magura V-5 drones and that Russian sources actually confirmed its sinking. But given that Ukraine released a video showing the said sinking, it would be pretty hard to deny. And again, it's Russia we're talking about. Nothing is impossible. But back to the Ukrainian footage. The grainy black and white video shows a Magura V-5 drone moving incredibly fast on the nighttime waves, so much so that it resembled a small speedboat. In a classic David vs. Goliath tale, this small speedboat strikes the nearly 370-foot-long behemoth, causing it to explode spectacularly. The video ends with Cesar Kunikov rolling onto its port side before sinking with roughly 70 crew members aboard. The very next day, Putin reportedly sacked the Black Sea Fleet commander, Admiral Viktor Sokolov, replacing him with his chief of staff, Vice Admiral Sergei Pinchuk. Admiral Nikolai Yevmenov, the commander-in-chief of the Russian Navy, will suffer the same fate about a month later, being replaced by the commander of the Northern Fleet, Admiral Alexander Musayev. Both of these moves are a direct result of the Ukrainian spectacular attacks on the Black Sea Fleet. March 23, 2024 a Ukrainian missile strike damages a Yuri Ivanov-class intelligence ship, Ivan Kurs, during an attack on the port of Sevastopol. The same ship was previously targeted by Ukrainian drones in May 2023. Two attacks on the same ship were no accident. In fact, Ukrainian forces have been outright hunting Ivan Kurs for nearly a year between the two attacks. Why? Because this 4,000-ton vessel is fitted with radar warning receivers and similar electronic eavesdropping devices that allows Russian forces to locate Ukraine's radars and missiles arrayed along the Black Sea coast. The same radars and missiles have been used to shoot down multiple Russian warplanes flying over the Black Sea and target warships sailing on it. So you can see why protecting this gear is in Ukraine's best interest. As long as Ivan Kurs is active, the Russian forces can essentially map out Ukraine's coastal forces, forestalling their hits. Since the second attack on the ship didn't sink it, it only inflicted damage, it's highly likely Ukraine will have another go at Ivan Kurs soon. April 21, 2024, the Komuna, the oldest ship in the Russian Navy's service, is struck by an anti-ship missile in Sevastopol. The extent of the damage to the salvaged ship is still unknown. May 6, 2024, the Magura V-5 naval drones are at it again. This time, they destroyed a patrol boat, later identified as a $3 million worth Mangust-class vessel, used for search and rescue and countering subversive operations. When you tally all these attacks up, it becomes clear why reports are claiming that the Ukrainian forces have taken out an impressive 25% of Russian vessels in the Black Sea. Not bad for a country without a proper navy, right? There are even reports that Russian ships are abandoning the Black Sea altogether, igniting hope that Ukraine could win back Crimea after 10 long years. According to Ukrainian Captain Dmitry Pletenchuk, only one loser missile ship is currently left in the Black Sea. Ukraine owes these incredible results to the daring and innovative asymmetric campaign carried out against an opponent that might be stronger but is risk-averse and lacks imagination. It seems that the country is constantly inventing new ways to sink Russian ships, and evidently, it's been quite successful. But can't Russia just replace the vessels Ukraine takes out? After all, the country is famous for its robust military-industrial complex and vast resources. Correction, the country was known for these things. Following the invasion of Ukraine, Russia became fully mobilized, politically, industrially, and militarily. This all-out mobilization has come at a great cost, both metaphorically and literally. Simply put, the mobilization has depleted resources that the Kremlin can't renew. And remember we're talking about naval vessels, not some disposable assets. Each vessel requires a significant investment of time and money, both things Russia is running out of. Even with simpler military equipment, such as shells and ammunition, the losses are outpacing new production. So what chances do new Russian vessels truly stand? Throw the fact that the current Russian shipbuilders are running out of key engine parts into the mix, and it becomes obvious that Russia's ability to replace lost vessels with new developments is nearly non-existent. But what about replacing lost vessels with existing ships? Couldn't Russia simply relocate existing ships from other fleets to replace those lost in combat? It could in theory, but in practice this plan has a major obstacle. Turkey the invasion of Ukraine has severely impacted the dynamics in the Black Sea, giving Turkey significantly more power over the region. 
Invoking Article 19 of the Montreux Convention, an international agreement that governs the passage of vessels through the Bosporus and Dardanelles Straits, Turkey closed its straits to the transit of military vehicles whose home base isn't in the Black Sea. In other words, no other Russian fleets can come to the Black Sea fleet's rescue. US officials have praised this move as a major contribution to Ukraine's security. But is Ukraine's security the only reason Turkey opted for this move? Absolutely not. Turkey considers the Black Sea a region of vital strategic importance. This sea is crucial for the connectivity of energy pipelines, which have allowed the country to extract natural gas. Turkey also enjoys the evident shift of power in the Black Sea, as the country has long sought to assert itself as a key player in the region. This region has also served as the main theater of competition between Russia and Turkey throughout the years, so you can see why Turkey is reveling in the new developments. The more ships the Russian Black Sea fleet loses, the more the country's naval supremacy in the area erodes. Of course, Turkey serving as a sort of gatekeeper of the Black Sea also pleases the US and other NATO members who see Russia as the most significant and direct threat to ally security and peace and stability in the Euro-Atlantic area. But let's not group the US and Turkey together just yet. Though Turkey has supplied Ukraine with weapons and supported its territorial integrity, it famously hasn't joined the sanctions against the Russian regime. It also famously blocked Sweden and Finland from joining NATO for quite some time to prevent the alliance from gaining a stronger foothold in the region and essentially encircling Russia. All things considered, it appears that Turkey still has no desire to burn all the bridges with Russia, maintaining a delicate, neither friend nor foe stance. But it's likely Turkey will continue blocking naval vessel transits through its straits in the Black Sea as long as it benefits the country, which, by all accounts, will be for quite a while. This blockade will likely force Russia to focus on land warfare against Ukraine. However, just like with the Black Sea Fleet's ships, the clock is ticking on Russia's reserve of land assets. Russia, a country with the highest number of tanks by a margin, is now seemingly running out of them at a concerning pace. According to some estimates, the Russian military has lost nearly 3,000 tanks since the beginning of the invasion. That's more tanks than most countries have to begin with. Sure, Russia started the war with over 12,000 units, but this increasingly fast loss rate is simply unsustainable, especially considering the challenges the country faces in replacing these losses. To make matters worse, specific tank models are getting decimated in the war. For instance, there are reports that over 1,100 T-72 tanks, which spearhead Russia's armored assaults, have been destroyed since the beginning of the invasion. The same goes for the T-90, the most modern combat tank available to the Russian armed forces, whose number was reduced by over 100 in two short years. Dozens of other tanks have been damaged, abandoned or captured, severely diminishing Russia's armored capabilities. However, these capabilities aren't only affected by the loss of tanks. Russia has also lost a host of armored fighting vehicles, infantry fighting vehicles, armored personnel carriers, and artillery pieces. Though many figures are floating around, it's believed that the Russian military has lost at least 1,500 artillery pieces and over 6,000 armored vehicles. And that's just the documented losses. The total number of undocumented losses likely puts the figure to well above 10,000. Given that the Russian military complex can only produce about 600 new tanks and 1,000 new fighting vehicles every year under perfect conditions, it's clear that rebuilding its armored forces from the ashes of war will be no more possible than replenishing its naval fleet. There's another arguably more important resource that Russia is quickly running out of as well – troops. Russia's military death toll in Ukraine has passed the 50,000 mark as of April 2024. Now, you might be confused by this information given the fact Russia now has more soldiers than when the invasion first started, about 15% more at that. This anomaly has to do with the 300,000 civilians drafted in late 2022. Though the number might seem impressive, the truth is that these individuals were practically shoved to the front without proper training, basically sending them straight to their deaths. Russia seemingly has no choice but to perform such an atrocity, because by the time replacements could be properly trained and equipped, there would be virtually no one to replace. So Russia might have a higher number of soldiers, but it also has a significantly higher death toll with every passing day. According to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, this daily death toll is now between 800 and 1,000 soldiers. Crunch the numbers and you'll realize that Ukraine could take out over 200,000 Russian soldiers by the end of 2024, which would lead to permanent damage, if not the collapse of the Kremlin. Besides its diminishing ships, weapons and troops, Russia has a whole host of issues to worry about. 
lackluster leadership, corruption running rampant in the military, repeatedly wrong intel, international financial and military aid for Ukraine, the superiority of Ukraine's military tactics, NATO's actions. Wherever you look, there's seemingly another issue popping out. But if there's one thing the invasion of Ukraine should have taught us, it's that Russia is prepared to go to great lengths to prove a point. And let's face it, even with the diminishing military capabilities, Russia is still superior to Ukraine in almost every regard. Plus, many experts claim that Russia will never fully run out of military equipment. At best, the country won't have the capability to fully meet the demands of the war in the very near future. Worst case scenario, Russia will find a way to adapt and improve its military effectiveness as it did many times before and, figuratively speaking, come back from the dead. Remember that the country has four more fleets, the Northern Fleet, the Pacific Fleet, the Baltic Fleet, and the Caspian Flotilla at its disposal. The sheer existence of these fleets proves that the Russian Navy is far from beaten. If Turkey were to unblock Russian access to the Black Sea, the power balance in the naval theater of the Russo-Ukrainian War could shift in an instant. But what do you think? Is there any way for Russia to weasel out of the sticky situation it finds itself in? Or are you positive the country will indeed run out of military equipment at the pace it's currently going? Share your theories in the comment section below. Now go and check out Crimea Siege Begins, Ukraine Takes Control Over the Black Sea Coast. Or click this other video instead.